Hello, wildlings. I'm your creep smith, and you found my fear forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Welcome back, wildlings. So, do you trust your television? Are you sure? Would you be willing to bet, say, your favorite person on that? Tonight's scary story, The Blue Channel, by First Breath. Will you watch with me? 3 a.m. I rub the sleep out of my eyes. My toddler, Olivia, stared back at me. It's the middle of the night, baby. What are you watching? She frowned. The Blue Channel. Will you watch with me? Please? My wife rolled over and grunted a mushed combination of, huh? And what is that? That sounded more like, uh, uh. She fumbled for her phone and fought with the sheets. She sighed as if to let me know of the effort, and I kissed her on the cheek. Go back to bed, babe. I got this one. I couldn't see anything, but Olivia reached out and grabbed my hand, and off we went. She led me into the hallway with a gleeful little hop step that shook the floor. I flicked the light switch by the bathroom. Nothing happened. Oof. Kiddo, power's out. I grumbled. No television tonight. No, Livy wailed. The TV still works. It does. Come on, Dada. See. Come see. Rain pelted the windows. Wind whistled through the cracks. A major storm had hit our small town in the valley. They closed the schools. My office shut down, too. The meteorologist predicted three inches of accumulation and I can remember the gut-wrenching stress that the news caused us about the house, the cars, about all of our everything. When you're a kid, bad weather is exciting, but when you're a parent, you worry. You always worry. Come on, kiddo, it's, t it's time for bed. But the blue channel is still on, Olivia pouted. Really? Even without the powder, pow, the power, it still works. I want to catch it together. W will you watch with me, please? I groaned. Okay, okay, sure, let's... Come on, kiddo, hurry. She took off with an overloaded diaper hanging so low it almost skidded across the ground. That overworked piece of cloth reminded me that she was still just a little tiny kid, regardless of how big she sounded. <laughs> I loved everything about her at that age. We gotta change your diapy, kiddo. I was watching, she interrupted, and they said that they wanted to talk to you. I stopped her. Well, who wants to talk to me? The show, she smiled. The Blue Channel. It's a kid's show? Yeah. And it's on at night. Only at night. And they want... They want to talk to me? I don't know if it was the shock of everything or just my general clumsiness, but a nail between our old floorboards caught my pinky toe at just the right angle. And I shouted out, FUCK! Just before my three-year-old pushed me. That's right. She actually pushed me. No, Daddy, no! The man on the blue channel said no cussing. Never ever cuss. It's inappropriate and rude, and you should know better as an adult. I was astonished. I couldn't believe her tone. She was so articulate, so angry so adult the reaction it caught me totally off guard i'm sorry honey you're right she turned and marched towards her room without another word i followed we quickly found the source of the issue the only light in the entire house a blue one trickled out from underneath the door told you 
I flipped the other switches a couple of times just to be sure, but of course nothing else responded. I thought about the cause. I tried to wake myself up at the same time. Olivia took the lag as an opportunity to move, of course. She darted ahead and pushed the door open. Wait, hon. The entire corridor became engulfed in blue. Our pictures, the blinds, the wallpaper, everything had a blue tint to it. Even my daughter. At the time, I blamed the strength of that light on the fact that all of the others were out. I couldn't think of any other rational cause. You believe me now? I found the television right where we left it, up against the far wall next to the dresser. The blue channel was nothing more than a blank screen. You might recognize it depending on your age and the era of your television because it's one of those you've had to be there things. If an old television can't get a signal from a cable box, it'll show a blue screen with input one or something like that written on top. It's totally normal. Another mystery blamed on bad technology. <sighs> sure. I still couldn't figure out how the thing was drawing power. I traced the cord to the wall and kicked out the plug. The screen stayed on, stayed blue. I messed with the knobs on the front, nothing changed. I gave the side one good smack before my daughter grabbed my hand and shouted clearly, No, Daddy! No! Do not touch the TV! And then she punched me. I couldn't believe it. This wasn't play fighting. This was real anger. Her eyes were determined. Her voice was shrill. She shrieked like a banshee. She aimed tiny little fists of fury in places she shouldn't know would yield results, and it disturbed me, even then. My kid knew not to punch people, let alone Dad. She never did this type of stuff. Not my olive. Honey, stop it! She hit me again. Why aren't you listening? I snapped. Do you need to go to timeout? She whimpered and pointed at the television. The man wanted to introduce himself to you, she sniffed. <sniffs> Before the ceremony. What man? Suddenly the screen flickered and a picture of a stage appeared. Honey, what man? Olivia pointed at the television. Watch. An applause track echoed without an audience. Five figures emerged from behind a velvet curtain. They all wore masks with black clothes and black hats, so you couldn't see much, but the first one was by far the biggest, and they all seemed to get shorter in height from there. The guests paraded in a single file line towards the front of the stage. The imaginary audience jeered and the group found their way into five painted wooden chairs toward the back and sat down. Then the audience grew quiet. Suddenly there was movement backstage. A man in a rabbit mask walked out. He looked lost at first, then confused, then altogether shocked by the presence of a camera. The audience laughed at his dismay. He smiled and twirled his mustache a bit. He held his hands back and fixed. Then he danced back and forth with his knees up, elbows high. The audience roared with appreciation. He took a bow and nearly fell down. Even Olivia chuckled at that. Is that the man? She ignored me, and I turned up the volume. Rabbit Mask parked himself in the highest chair above the other participants and posed with one leg on top of the other as if interviewing them. He pulled out a set of index cards, dropped one to the floor, and then fell down picking it up. The audience laughed again. This is weird. Olivia slugged my shoulder again. The clapping stopped, and the group of characters stared blankly ahead the screen. The man stayed still. 
Did we interrupt? Yes, she answered. You did interrupt. We waited. After what felt like an eternity, but could only have been just moments, when Rabbit Mask leaped up from his chair and pounced forward. The audience gasped. He approached each of the guests one by one and peeled back their masks, slowly as if revealing a prize. First up was a teenage boy with blonde hair, then a younger one with dark skin, two little red heads, and finally, a boy not much older than Olivia. I studied their faces. They all looked scared. Petrified would be a better word for it. The oldest looked like he wanted to say something, but he didn't. Olive? Olive, who are they? Silence again, from my daughter and from the channel. But this time, we waited for at least a full minute. Okay, kiddo, it's bedtime. Out of nowhere, Rabbit Mask rushed forward and grabbed the camera. He stared into it, at us. I mean, he really looked at us. Back and forth between Olivia and me. His eyes were a crystal kind of blue, his lips were dark red, and his teeth were chipped and crooked in the back, but admirably straight in front, and when he laughed, his tongue flicked out, almost like a snake's. Why is he doing that? Don't talk, Daddy. Why not? What's he going to do? Watch. Rabbit Mask let go of the cameraman. He marched back and forth with his hands on his hips as if insulted by my insolence. The children beside him giggled in unison, but they weren't smiling. Olivia? I stammered. Honey? Rabbit Mask hopped on one foot and held the other. Then he fell and sobbed like a baby. The audience howled with laughter, and I felt my face grow red. Were they laughing at me at what had happened earlier? This isn't funny. My daughter giggled, but her face didn't seem to smile. She just stared ahead at the television. The man stopped his whining, regained his composure, he mimed the steps of checking his breath against an imaginary watch as he sat neatly again at his high wooden chair. Uh, honey, we need to turn this off, sweetheart. Do, do you know how? I fiddled with the plug again. Nothing happened. I turned the dials. Nada. I kicked the side of the television, and when Olivia tried to grab my foot, I held her gently to the side and kicked it some more. You're missing it, she shrieked. You're missing the best part. I turned to look, if only for just a second. There was a countdown of sorts displayed on the screen. The first word was one. The camera panned to Rabbit Mask doing a little jig with one of the boys. Then two. Two boys dancing. Then three. Then four. Five. The screen cut. All of the guests were seated but one. The oldest was standing in the front with his mask removed and long hair untethered. His knees bounced together nervously. His skin appeared pale and sickly. And a thin line traced down his light-colored boxers. And he opened his mouth to say something, scream it. But his voice stayed muted. And a figure approached him from behind the curtain. Oh, no. He never saw him. Turn around, kid. Come on. Rabbit Mask held a long machete in his hands. What the fuck? I tried again unsuccessfully to crack the screen. I, I kicked it, punched it, smacked it until my hand felt broken and my knuckles went raw with blood. I just couldn't do it. I glanced back over for a second, only a second. Rabbit Mask reared back and slashed at the poor kid's neck, one swift motion. His body fell forward like a sack of potatoes, and I screamed. And he hit him a dozen more times, over and over, 
the back, in the legs, in the arms, blood poured out from each wound like a hose. His body jerked and spasmed this way and that. I think the first blow must have killed him, but that didn't stop the violence. Not one bit. Olivia clapped through the whole thing. Honey, stop. Please, get your mother. But she ignored me. I looked for something metal to crack the glass with and found a wooden bat instead. I swung and managed to splinter it a little bit. The picture stayed connected, not even any static. I swung harder and the camera panned out for a wider shot. The remaining participants stared blankly ahead and then they pointed at us. My daughter turned again and began to climb inside the television. My turn, Ollie. It's my turn. I know what you're thinking. Fuck you, right? There's no way that this could have happened. Fine, whatever. I've heard it all a thousand times before. Believe what you want at this point because I know the truth. She used the bottom of the screen as a ledge, and as soon as one little leg was inside, it disappeared with a horrible sucking sound. I held her left hand tight, like I held my own life, but it wasn't enough. Something pulled at her, something stronger. Her arm disappeared with a pop. I heard her shout, and then she was gone. The blue channel stayed lit, the participants waited, I waited, and Olivia ran out from behind the curtain. She smiled at Rabbit Mask and sat down in the fifth chair beside him. He smiled back. All of them ignored the growing pool of blood at their feet. Instead, they waved to me one by one like the end of some fucking sitcom. They stared at the camera and they waved and the screen shrunk. Then it went black altogether. And I never saw my daughter again. So stay scary, my wildlings. Maybe if you ever have kids, try doing stuff with them instead of plopping them down in front of the TV and make the most of your nights.